So I'm going to have a look at the internals in this particular video of the CubeThinker i35. Possibly do some thermal mods here to it because I've discovered that when you're taxing the system, so 100% CPU load, it will get to 82 degrees, will not go over that, which is fine. That's perfect for a fanless Core M3 tablet. But what does happen that when you game on it, it will hit 92 degrees, which is getting a little too hot, but it doesn't thermal throttle. So in order to take off the rear case, you're going to need one of these. This is a Torx screwdriver and the size of it is a T5. So you remove all of the screws along the bottom. There are quite a few of them and the rear cover comes off quite easily. Just pops off. It doesn't clip in place. So the internals, you can see that they've done a reasonably good job here, that it's well laid out. The battery is screwed in place. There's some counterweights here and we've got a 2280 SATA 3 SSD there of unknown manufacturer. I can't actually tell who makes this thing. So we have two 5,000 milliamp hour cells hooked up together with a total of 38 watt hours, 8.7 volts. There are our two speakers, the Intel wireless AC3165 chipset. And yes, this time around, Cube has put a nice big copper heatsink on there. But what I think they could have done to help reduce temperatures Probably various reasons why they haven't done this is put a thermal pad on. So on the underside here, we can see copper film on the back. And if they put a thermal pad right here, I think that's probably all that's needed. We can transfer heat away from the chipset onto the whole rear of this. Of course, there's going to be a trade-off that the bottom of it, if you're going to use this on your lap, is going to get quite a bit hotter there. But as it is for long periods of gaming, when I was testing it for two hours, um, it does get really quite warm and hot to the touch so I don't see it actually being too much of a con transferring heat to the bottom then the palm rest hopefully and around the area around this side shouldn't get as hot. I'm going to pull off the copper heat sink they have on there and take a look at what they've used. I'm pretty sure that just under this will be a thermal pad. Now there's various things we could do. I can put a, a thermal compound on there instead of using the thermal pad which may help. Um, I could even add another copper plate, but I, we don't have a lot of room to play with. So if I put this on there, you imagine if I cut that into a thinner strip and put that on the top, giving more copper, um, I could use something like a, a thermal adhesive between those two layers, then put a thermal pad on the top. There's really not enough room for that because it is a very thin a notebook and the space we have to play with between those two layers, I think is only around a millimeter there. Okay, so I just removed those four screws and I'm going to remove this heat sink. But before, make sure that, well, I should have the battery unplugged to play it real safe. And also make sure you've earthed yourself. You don't have any static around, so you're not touching your dog or your cat or anything. Because that could be a problem with the components under here. You don't want to uh, fry anything. So that just pulled up nice and easy. And I can see that they've got a black thermal pad on there. So really, we probably don't have to do anything. As mentioned at the start, you can just put a thermal pad on top. I'd say as large as you can and one millimeter will do the job there. But I'm gonna pull this off and put a little bit of a thermal compound on there. So I've just used some Arctic Clean here to clean the chipset. Now it wasn't very dirty, so you probably don't actually need to do this. It only had a thermal pad on there. It wasn't like it was thermal paste. You could of course use something like alcohol as well to clean it. All right, so I have applied some thermal paste. Now it may look like a lot, but I decided to spread it out this time and it's actually a very thin coating all over the whole chipset there. Any access is going to go into the recesses either side so it shouldn't be a problem and it's not conductive I don't think MX4 that I have used here so it's not like a metal based one that could short things out. This should be perfectly fine and I'm going to put that heat sink, the copper one, the stock factory one back on there now and then place on a a thermal pad on top of that. I'm going to place a little copper shim. This one is 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters and that's going to go on the recess there. That's just to help. I think that it'll it'll help lower temperatures just a little bit but mainly because the recess is there of about half a millimeter and that should help contact with the thermal pad and putting a little bit of pressure down on top of where I put the thermal paste to underneath it and to secure it in place with some thermal glue that I have, or thermal adhesive. 
So a little bit of um, thermal paste has spilled out the sides there while well, the adhesive, but that's not a problem for me. Um, I'm not going to be looking at it every day. So I thought about putting a thermal pad on over the whole thing in the start. Then I thought that maybe a little bit more copper there just might help. And I'm just going to put, this is 15 mils by 15 mils on the top here, one millimeter thick, because I'm a little worried about putting that back cover on if I'll be able to close it properly. And that will give contact with that back copper foil that's on there, transferring heat to that, which I think should be enough. So I'm gonna have a look now and see what kind of results we'll get. So looking at the results now, I've had GTA 5 running for 25 minutes. I've been playing it. I've just done the first part, the intro. And have a look at the temperatures as well. I've got my thermal probe here. So we're gonna get more heat on the body of the notebook now because of this mod. It gets warm anyway, but I'm seeing temperatures now of around 35 degrees, 36, 37 on the top. I'll have a look at the bottom in just a second, but first I wanted to show you what the the thermals are now looking at HW info. We'll check that out. You can see that the CPU is getting up to 67 degrees. That is down from 92 when gaming. And then the GPU is 65 degrees. You see that GPU, 65. Really, really good results here. So it just shows you what a little bit of copper and some thermal pads can do really does improve things so best of luck with your own mod but before I end this video I'm just going to zoom out again and we'll have a look at the underside where it is getting very warm to the touch GTA is still running so now that is around oh actually I thought it was a lot warmer than this it seems it's maxing out about 32 degrees there Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope to catch you back in the channel soon.